Hi, my name is Hannah Beam, and I'm the instructor for Hutchinson Art Center's online art camp. Today, we're talking about when do you make art? This is a question that you get to answer. When do you make art? Do you make art in art class when you're in art class? What about when you're in other classes? Do you make art then? Do you make art when you have free time at home? Do you make art when you're bored? What about when you're inspired? When you have a good idea? What about when you wanna practice? Today, that's the one we're gonna focus on because we're gonna practice drawing. I have some really great drawing tips for you so that you can learn how to draw anything. So, my three biggest tips for drawing are to draw light, draw loose, and draw simple first. Doing these three things can really help you set up a foundation for a drawing instead of drawing something and then not being happy with how it's turning out. These let you draw simple, loose, and light so that you can change your drawing quickly in the beginning before you get too far in. So I have some examples of things that you can practice these things. So you can kind of do some warm-ups or um, just practices. So draw light. The first thing you can do is take your pencil and draw as heavy as you can. And then with each line, try to draw it a little bit lighter until you get all the way as light as you possibly can. This is a really good exercise to do so that you can practice drawing light and get an idea of how light you should be drawing and how light it's even possible to draw. Just helps you get a really good feel. Drawing loose is another thing you can practice. I started out here by just squiggling and scribbling just random stuff and then I drew some shapes. So I drew some loose circles and some loose triangles. Some loose squares. Just anything to kind of practice getting loose and kind of warming up your hand and your wrist. Drawing simple means breaking things down into really simple shapes first. So I just kind of drew some really random objects like a bowl and a cup and a bottle with some simple circle shapes. All of these objects are really just made with circles that are connected together. So I have an example of how to use, how to draw simple and use simple shapes to make complex things. So here I have some foundations for a horse drawing. I drew these a little bit darker so that you could definitely be able to see them. And I wanted to show you that you can use lots of different kinds of shapes to break down the same kind of form. So I have circles, triangles, squares and rectangles, and then kind of a combination of these shapes. And I'll show you how you can use these as a foundation. So you can see all of these are really loosely drawn. None of them are just a single line. They are all just kind of sketchy drawings. But with any one of these, I could come over it with a darker line and start to get the shapes for my horse. out of these simple shapes. So I broke this horse drawing down into these simple shapes first, and then that made it a lot easier to actually draw my horse. And it works well with any shape that you use. I usually like to use circle shapes because that's what works really well for me. But maybe triangles or rectangles or some combination of them is what works the easiest for you. So you can try out some different things and see what works. So the next tip I have for drawing is draw what you see, not what you know. 
So when you, we draw things, it's really easy to try to draw things how we think they should look. But drawing always works best when you really look at things and draw what you see and try to avoid drawing what you think about the object. It can be a tricky thing to do, but it's a good thing to try to practice. So, I have three objects or three different examples here of things that I could draw. I have this paint bottle here. I have this hat. And I have this picture that I found in the Hutchinson magazine of a llama. I'll just hold that open with my paint bottle. There we go. So, I could draw all of these things using these tips here. Drawing light, drawing loose, and drawing simple first, and drawing what I see and not what I know. So, I'll start with the paint bottle because it's really simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my paint bottle and I'm gonna break it down into simple shapes. So I can see here, that this is a circle, so this is rounded, and this edge at the bottom is rounded too, so of the lid, the bottom edge of this lid is rounded, so I could use a circle for that. This is rounded here, so a circle shape here would work well, and then this is a little bit rounded too, so I could use kind of a flatter oval kind of thing, and then in between is where I'll try to connect these. So I'll show you how I do that. Let's see. I'll leave it standing up like this here. So for the lid, and I'm just gonna start really loose, and then that's bigger, and then that goes down here. So right now, this, what I have here, it's pretty light, so I'll try to hold it up so you can see it a little better just in case. There. This is called a gesture. It's just a really loose drawing that I can use to decide if I have everything right how I want it. So if I look at this, I think my lid's a little short. So I can move that circle up. And kind of get a rough idea if this is looking accurate to what I want it to look like. And I think it is. So from here, I can go in with my heavy line to draw my paint bottle. And I'm using these loose gesture lines as a guideline for how to draw this bottle shape. See, and now that I'm going in with my heavy line, you'll notice that I'm not using really loose lines anymore. I'm using long, smooth lines for my outlines because I already did my sketchy lines with my gesture. So let's see, this is where the cap closes here, and it's got that little bit that shows you where it's like hinged at. And it's got a label on it, so I could draw my label on it. So here's a really simple drawing of the paint bottle. And now what I can do is I can erase all these light marks because they're so light that they erase really easy, which is why you draw light, so that you can erase all the hard work you did to figure it out. And everybody just sees the nice line that you have in the end. And they'll wonder how in the world you got such a good drawing of a paint bottle. Because you'll erase all your secrets. And so from here you could add a background, you could get more paint bottles, you could draw the same paint bottle a bunch of times, whatever you want. I'll also show you this with something a little more complex, like the llama. So, 
for the llama. I'm gonna keep using circle shapes because circles just work really well for me. But again, if a rectangle shape works best for you or triangles, you can use whatever kinds of shapes work the easiest for you, but I like circles. So let's see, I'm gonna start with his little head. So I'll start with a circle for his head, kind of got a neck, his body, here's his back end. I still use a full circle, even though I can't see a full circle here, I'm gonna use a full circle so that I have an idea of what's going on. He's got little ears and like a little, little nose in there. Here's his leg his joint, the rest of his leg. Oh, and this leg's kind of lifted, so it's kind of got a different shape. Well, we'll put this one, the foot goes off the page. And then I can see a little bit of his back leg here. There. He's kind of looking in this way a little more. So, the first thing I noticed with my gesture, this went, I did this gesture really quickly. I have not spent a lot of time on this drawing. And I noticed that his foot goes off the page and it's a little bit awkward. So what I can do is I can, just kind of loosely erase this. I'm still kind of working, so I'm not worried about it right now. And I can move all of this up a little bit, or I could make it smaller, but I don't like drawing small. I like to draw really big. So I'm gonna move him up. Got his head with his little nose. Get his ears, and his neck, the body. So I'm still close to the bottom, but I'm not right on the bottom, so that'll work. And his back leg. So, let's see. So now that I have my initial gesture, I have, these are all just simple shapes kind of connected, and I'm constantly looking back at my reference that I'm drawing from because I really want to draw what I'm seeing here and not what I know. So I'm always looking back and asking, is this look right? Does this match up? Is his neck long enough? I don't think his neck's long enough, so I'll move his head up. So as I'm drawing, I'm starting to look and check, am I drawing what I see? Because drawing what you see is gonna help your drawings look more accurate. So if you wanna draw some realistic looking things, you wanna be making sure and checking back to your references that it matches. So now that I have this in here, let's see. I'm still working kind of loose right now, so I can kind of get more of these details in. So with this paint bottle, there weren't a lot of details to go back in and mess around with. But with this, it's a little more complex, so I'm gonna spend a little more time making sure I have all the details are gonna go in the right place, like his eyes and the bottom of his nose here and how that goes up. Kind of the shape. And that ear is kind of like turned up like this, like he's like, hey, I hear ya. What are you doing over here? Hello. Mm -hmm. I can kind of see the shoulder here. It doesn't quite go all the way around, so I'm gonna connect that. Nice strong looking legs, Mara Llama. Still look a little short on the legs, but we'll go with it for now.
there's a door here, so I can't actually see the rest of his body. So I'm going to go ahead and put that door in. Because if I can't see it, then I don't really know what's going on. There's that door. See this back leg here too. So now I have a better idea of the details, so now I can come in with my outline. And I'm going to do kind of a fluffy outline because this is a fluffy llama. Just see kind of the top of those toes. Yeah. And I won't put as much detail in this back foot because it's farther it's farther in the back, so we can't quite see as much of it. I made that too big. And then you can go in and add your final details once you have your outline done, like all these cool spots. And you could color them and start adding value. But this is the basics of learning how to draw. All sorts of little things down here. So, all you have to do is draw light, draw loose, and draw simple first. Remember, I just broke this down into really simple shapes like circles. You could use triangles or squares, and then I started going back in and adding details. And the thing that really helps it to look more realistic is drawing what I see and not what I know. So every time I pause, I'm always pausing to look back at my reference. If you follow these tips and keep practicing, you'll be able to draw anything that you like. So, to start out, so, to start out, think about what your favorite thing is. And maybe it's a favorite toy, maybe you have a favorite cup, maybe you have a favorite pet, or maybe you your favorite thing is your parents. Whatever it is, pick something to draw and start practicing drawing it. Draw light, draw loose, and draw simple first. And draw what you see and not what you know. And you can work on practicing your drawing skills. So, there's lots of different times that you can make art. When do you make art? 
Today, I made art because I wanted to practice. So, I hope you have fun creating today.